All right, here we go. Big move. China just burned its last bridge to the West's chip-making elite. No more ASML. No more TSMC. This isn't a pause, a warning, or even just a message. It's a full-on, no-turning-back cut. While Washington was still basking in its own self-congratulatory moment over export bans, Beijing quietly made a move that could blow up the entire semiconductor order. It's not just about chips anymore. We're talking about your phone, your car, your data, your entire future, all of it now hanging in the balance, potentially in the hands of Chinese microchips. So, why would China make this drastic move? Why kill off the very companies it once relied on? What exactly is hiding behind that door they just slammed shut? Stick with me. This is about to get real. What's happening right now is bigger than just a technology shift. It's about power, geopolitical leverage, and something far more fundamental, global sovereignty. And the way things are going, it's going to get messy, really messy. On the 18th of January, 2025, Beijing did something dramatic. It halted all future purchases and technical cooperation with ASML and TSMC. Just 72 hours after the Dutch government pulled the plug on ASML's DUV export licenses to China, this wasn't just some political grandstanding number. This was a systemic shutdown. China imported a massive $2.6 billion worth of ASML lithography machines in 2023 alone. But when the Netherlands revoked service support for those machines under pressure from the US, essentially bricking $15 billion of Chinese chip infrastructure, Beijing came to a critical realization. Relying on foreign suppliers wasn't just a strategic risk anymore, it was a liability. And this isn't some spontaneous reaction. As tech strategist Dan Wong from Gavacol Dragonomics points out, this move wasn't a surprise. China had been preparing for this exact moment. When Western supply chains became more of a threat than a benefit, Beijing was poised to act. This wasn't a knee-jerk response, it was calculated. The writing had been on the wall for years. China saw what was coming and got ready to pivot. But cutting off ASML and TSMC, that's not just about burning bridges. It forces China to create its own path, and it has to do it fast, real fast. Think about this. The 2022 U.S. sanctions were specifically designed to cripple China's semiconductor ambitions. Blockade. Lockdown. They aim to paralyze China's access to advanced chip-making tools, AI accelerators, and foreign talent. The idea was to create a bottleneck so severe that China's semiconductor industry would grind to a halt. But something unexpected happened. Instead of stalling, China shifted into overdrive. From 2022 to 2024, China poured over $75 billion into its domestic semiconductor sector. This wasn't some half-hearted effort. It was a full-blown investment spree. And the numbers speak for themselves. Even with export bans, semiconductor equipment imports jumped by 33.8% year-over-year in 2024. China wasn't aiming for self-sufficiency overnight. No, the goal was more strategic, rapid insulation. They didn't just want to stand alone. They wanted to completely detach from Western influence. This wasn't a 10-year plan. It became a 3-year sprint. But here's where it gets interesting. Even though China is fast-tracking its capabilities, the road ahead isn't smooth. The tools they need are old, outdated, and limited. ASML's EUV machines are $200 million marvels of engineering, and they're key to producing chips at the cutting edge 5 nanometer and smaller levels. But guess what? China can't import them, and it probably won't for years. So what's the solution? This is where the unthinkable happens. China is skipping the advanced tools entirely. In March 2025, Shenzhen-based Sicarier came out and claimed they could achieve sub-negative 7 nanometer chip production using a proprietary DUV-based process. Now, the verdict is still out on whether this works, but Huawei's Mate 60 Pro already stunned analysts by featuring a 7 nanometer chip made with old, pre band technology. What's more, they pulled it off using triple patterning DUV processes, a technique once thought to be unscalable. It's a brute force solution, sure, but it works. They're forcing Moore's law to bend, says Dylan Patel from Semi-Analysis. Sure, it's inefficient, power-hungry, and expensive, but it's functional. And this is where China's ability to adapt old technology gets really interesting. We're seeing them push the limits of what was thought possible with old tools. Huawei's Mate 60 Pro isn't just a phony ice, a declaration that China can compete, even without the best tools on the market. And that's not where it stops. If you think this is just about adapting old tech, think again. Huawei's Kirin 9000S chip, the one in the Mate 60 Proas, made by SMIC, China's own semiconductor manufacturer. This is a massive leap forward. By 2025, there are even rumors that SMIC is close to producing near 3 nanometer class chips. 
Now, we're not there yet, defect rates are high, yields are low, but the fact that they're even attempting it with these limitations speaks volumes about China's ambition and capability. This isn't survival anymore. This is disruption. It's about challenging the established order. Huawei's Mate 60 Pro wasn't just about the phone 8, it was about the chip inside it and the message that China has entered the building. SMIC's market share in China jumped from 5% in 2020 to 19.3% in 2024. This isn't just a survival tactic, it's a calculated move to reassert control over its tech ecosystem. And what happens next? Well, the global suppliers are feeling it. ASML's revenues from China dropped 27% year-over-year in Q4 of 2024. That's a direct hit. And let's be clear, this isn't just a shift, it's a reprogramming of the global tech economy. And then it gets even more intense. You see, Washington didn't just stop at sanctions. In December 2024, the U.S. blocked NVIDIA from shipping its latest AI chip, the H20, to any entity linked to China's military civil fusion policy. China's response? They suspended exports of graphite and gallium-2 essential elements used in the U.S. defense sector. This caused prices for advanced radar systems and EV batteries to spike by 16% within just 60 days. The battlefield isn't just in semiconductor fabs anymore. It's expanded to factories, research labs, and the financial markets. The sanctions keep piling up, and for every move the U.S. makes, Beijing has a counter. Every restriction gives rise to a workaround. This isn't just a trade war. It's a full-on technological cold war with real economic consequences. And it's spreading beyond just tech companies. Now, let's zoom out. The big picture here. China isn't just making moves on chips, it's redefining how global markets work. By late 2024, China had filed over 21,000 semiconductor patents, a 34% increase year over year. They're not just producing chips, they're controlling the entire value chain. Huawei designs, SMIC fabricates, Changshin seals the deal with memory. And they're not just making chips, they're building an ecosystem that could leave the West locked out of a $1.2 trillion market by 2028. This is more than just about semiconductors. This is about global power dynamics. If China achieves its goal of 70% self-sufficiency by 2028, Western firms might find themselves locked out of entire markets across Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Think of it like Android versus iOS, except one platform controls drones, satellites, and 5G grids across entire continents, and that's power. At home, consumers are going to feel it. A February 2025 report from the U.S. Trade Office warned that tariffs on Chinese-made components would drive up smartphone prices by 41% over the next 18 months. That means an iPhone 16 Pro Max could hit $2,300 retail. And it's not just about phones. Your smart thermostat, your electric vehicle, your smartwatch, all of these depend on chips made in either the U.S. or China. And let's not forget about privacy. With the U.S.-made chips beholden to the Cloud Act and Chinese-made chips tied to Beijing's cybersecurity laws, your data is no longer just a matter of preference. Where your device is made determines where your data goes. It's no longer just a tech debate, it's a privacy one. So, you think you can avoid the conflict altogether? Think again. By 2026, 87% of connected devices worldwide will use components sourced from either U.S. or Chinese supply chains. Whether you like it or not, you're part of this. China didn't just say goodbye to ASML and TSMC. They slammed the door, locked it, and threw away the key. And while Western firms scramble to uncouple, Beijing isn't backing down. They're doubling down. What began as a reaction to sanctions has evolved into a full-on blueprint for independence. For China, it's not just about survival, it's about sovereignty. But here's the kicker. The war is just getting started. The battle isn't just about chips anymore, it's about capital. About reshaping global markets in China's image. Under the surface, Beijing has begun offloading U.S. tech-linked assets and sovereign bond holdings. If this hits Wall Street, it won't just be tech stocks that crash it could trigger a global recession. And your retirement funds? Well, let's just say the fallout could be bigger than you think. So, ask yourself, what happens when this stops being about chips and starts being about the capital markets? That storm is already forming, and believe me, it's going to get interesting.